Howdy, I'm Gray Pilgrim. Time for another history tale, though not as elaborate as the one I told about Stalingrad. I don't know if you can see this. This is a sporterized rifle. Sporterized means that it was a military rifle, but uh, in the 1950s, a lot of folks decided that uh, a rifle uh, for hunting deer was much more important than a uh, uh, one that was all fancy for, uh, oh, let me get this up a little bit, uh, fancy for, for collecting. Col collecting military rifles was not exactly a uh, pastime of anyone at the time. Today, not, it's, it's much more of a, an interest. So this one, the top uh, handguard and stuff is, is cut off. The uh, uh, bottom, bottom of the stock is, is cut short. It's made much lighter so that you can take it out and go hunting with it. This is in 7mm Mauser, 7x57. And what it is, is an 1893 Spanish Mauser. Now why is that important? Well, let me show you another one. Also sort of sporterized, but not as much. This is also an 1893 Spanish Mauser. As you see, it still has the uh, uh, top guard on it, and it's uh, relatively in, in good shape of uh, the, the condition. Let me see if I can pull, no, I can't really turn it, turn it. so I'm gonna just do this. Um, even has the uh, uh, things for the, the uh, the funny belt, I can't remember what it's called offhand. I'm, I'm having a brain freeze at the moment. One problem with this though, it was sporterized in one thing and that's the, uh, the bolt. You notice it's turned down here. This bolt should be straight. Well this, America first ran into in 1898 when she went over and fought with the Cubans, or in Cuba, with the Spaniards. And they used, I don't know if you see it up over my shoulder, over the top of the door there. That was my great-grandfather's uh, Mauser, or excuse me, uh, Craig Jorgensen, which was the rifle that was used in the Spanish-American War. I don't know of any tales of him in the war itself, but I know where he got it, which was the U.S. Army. And it sort of followed him home. So uh, uh, ipso facto, he must have been in the Army. I know he was in the Army then, and he was... Uh, probably in the Spanish-American War, but I don't think he went off to uh, Manila or to uh, 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 Havana. Uh, he, we, we fought, uh, what, for a little under a year, and in the end we ended up with, with uh, Cuba, Puerto Rico, uh, uh, the Philippines, Guam, uh, a bunch of other things. Uh, we uh, fomented revolutions in the South America against Spanish rule, and um, this was sort of in, on top of the fact that in about 1821 or so, we had uh, uh, pay, agreed to pay off the Spa Spanish debt in return for all of Southern Florida. So that's how Florida became part of the U.S. <laughs> <coughs> Remember, it was originally a Spanish uh, settlement there. But one of the earliest uh, uh, cities in America is St. Petersburg, Florida, which was founded by the Spanish. Not the oldest, though. They'll tell you it's the oldest. It isn't. The oldest is Santa Fe in New Mexico, uh, which was under a territorial governor. Uh, I've been to the Palace of the Governors there. Anyway, this was the rifle that we fought against in the Spanish-American War. The Craig is a very good rifle. It was in uh, 3040 Craig, which is 30 caliber bullet with the 40 grains of uh, smokeless powder. It's the first uh, smokeless rifle in the U.S. Uh, Army. I think, I mean, the Lee uh, preceded it, but that was a Navy rifle, and it was it was very short-lived, and uh, there weren't that many of them. But anyway, the uh, Craig was a very good rifle, but the thing about this is it fed from stripper clips, and you could feed in, I think, eight rounds, and you could top it off or uh, uh, recharge it very quickly. The Craig is a little more difficult because you've got to pull down the side plate and dump things into it and then close it again, and it only holds five rounds. So it was a little more difficult to shoot. Anyway, uh, that's the Craig. Uh, the Mauser here was in 7 millimeter Mauser. It's in 1893. In 1893, Paul Mauser was selling these like hotcakes to everybody. 
Uh, he sold this model to the, no, was it the Navy? No, it was in 1896 that he sold to the Swedes. But there, were, there are versions of this all over South America, in Argentina, in Chile, everywhere. So, I mean, this was a very uh, popular uh, rifle, uh, at least amongst the uh, Spanish speakers. And uh, anyway, it's a, an interesting rifle. Uh, interestingly, uh, the president during the Spanish-American War was McKinley. And uh, his uh, vice president was a fellow by the name of uh, Theodore Roosevelt. But before that, Roosevelt had been, uh, in, in McKinley's first term, I think, he had been his uh, undersecretary of the Navy and was really in favor of a war with, uh, with Spain. He was very much into American, uh, uh, the fighting spirit. Uh, McKinley was much more into diplomacy. But uh, Roosevelt had many, many connections, which is why he ended up in the uh, McKinley administration. And uh, he was... Uh, always pushing wherever he could to get uh, people interested in a war with uh, Spain. Another sort of uh, ally of his was uh, well William Randolph Hearst, who had, had his Hearst uh, newspaper empire, and he was really, really pushing for it because he, it sold newspapers. You know, the, the, the concentration camps in, uh, in Cuba and the, uh, the oppression of the poor locals and all of that. You know that that was uh, horror horror stories and and sketches in the in the paper, none of which was really based on much fact. Yellow journalism was very very rampant then, but uh, after the war, America looked at this thing and thought, well, gee, that Mauser is a pretty good idea. So they went back to the drawing board and redesigned everything and came up with the 1903 Springfield, which Paul Mauser happened to notice, or the Mauser Company, and they said, hey, America. You did that without taking patent rights out. Uh, well, sort of, yeah, we did. Uh, how about if we just pay you royalties? So for every Mauser, I mean, every 1903 Springfield we made, <clears throat> we had to pay Mauser a royalty. I forget how much. But uh, uh, that sort of stopped in World War I. <laughs> uh, but then we didn't have enough Mausers, I mean, uh, Springfields to go around in World War I, and we ended up with the uh, 1917 Enfield. But that's another story. This is what started it all. The 7mm, 7x57 Mauser of 1893 in the uh, Spanish Army. And it's a very pretty rifle. This one is totally mismatched in terms of uh, parts. Uh, so is this one. Uh, they're both mismatches. And they don't have the correct bolt in them. But they both function, they both work, and they're both uh, good rifles. So they're part of my collection. I get I don't get the best, but I get uh, uh, working junk. Let's put it that way. <laughs> anyway, happy trails.